Problem set 2.1. We're going to go over a few examples. Make sure you get these uh, positive and negative numbers down a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with number 15 on page 107. The ones from 1 to 14 are self-explanatory enough, but uh, 15 through 34 sometimes can be a little tricky. All they're asking you to do is put a greater than or less than sign between each of the following pairs of numbers so that it's a true statement. So if you've got two numbers, like 3 and 7, which end of the greater than or less than sign points to the 3? Well, it's always the smaller end. The smaller end always points to the smaller number. The bigger end always points to the bigger number. Can't be wrong if you keep that in mind. So if we have a 7 and a negative 5, well, if you remember the number line, all of the negative numbers are smaller than the positive numbers. So, this is a smaller number than this, so we drew that. We point it toward the smaller number. What if, for example, I kind of did a little switch here and put a negative 20 and a negative 1. Now, the number 20 is a larger number than 1, but if you look at the number line, where is my negative 1? It's right there and my 20 is clear down here somewhere. So which number is the furthest to the left? Remember what I said? If we have a number and another number is to the left of it, that number to the left is the smaller number. This case, even though one is smaller because 20 is further to the left, it means it's smaller than the negative one. Something to remember there, very important to remember. All right, let's keep going here. Um, let's try something like a decimal here, number 25. I haven't done a whole lot with decimals, but we've got a negative 0.75 and a positive 0.25. Shouldn't be too difficult because you know that all negative numbers are smaller than positive. So you don't even have to know what 0.75 is as a fraction or what it's close to. You know that it's negative, so you know it's going to be smaller than the positive. Alright, so that's uh, 15 to 34. Number 35 to 50, they're just giving you some absolute values and asking you to find them. And if you remember, all you're going to do is take the absolute value sign off and make whatever is in that sign positive. So for example, 43, absolute value of negative 3 fourths. You're going to take the absolute value symbol off and make it positive. So you just get positive 3 fourths. How much easier can you get? Um, oh, 51 to 62. I guess you can get easier. They're asking for the opposites. So if they give you a 3, that's 3 from 0. So how far is the other number? It's opposite from 0, also 3, but it's opposite, so it's going to have the opposite sign, which is negative 3. So every one of these, from 51 to 62, all you're going to do is write that number down and put the opposite sign on it. So 60 is at negative 200, just going to write the opposite, positive 200, and you're done. 63 to 70 is a little bit trickier. I didn't cover this in the lecture, not much on it, so I wanted to cover it a little bit in the lesson here. Um, let's look at number 63. And this will save you in the future if you can kind of catch this bit of information. Anytime we're dealing with multiple negative signs or opposite signs or subtraction signs, whatever word you want to use, all means the same thing. What you need to remember is if you have an even number, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative signs close together like that with nothing in between, no numbers, no addition, subtraction, multiplication, division signs, it's just a negative, could be a parenthesis, doesn't matter, a negative and a negative, any 2, 4, 6, 8 even number automatically um, throws the negative out, cancels it out, and just makes it a positive, always. If it's an odd number, if I were, for example, rather than write uh, this, 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 when you have an odd number like this, it's always going to reduce to 
this number with a negative sign. So an even number of negatives always is a positive. An odd number of negatives is always a negative. So that makes it easy when you go ahead and do 63 through 70. You just count the number of negative signs. The only time that that's going to give you a little bit of trouble is when you get to one like 68. Because here we don't have a parenthesis, we have an absolute value sign. What do you know about the absolute value of a negative number? Absolute value of a negative number is a positive number. So this, what I have in the square here, is going to change to a positive 5. Then this, we haven't done anything with this negative, will go on it. So this is, this is not the case when we are dealing with a negative parenthesis negative 5 because the parenthesis doesn't change anything, but the absolute value, you do that first, then you put the negative on it, or not, depending on what the, what the problem is. All right, so that is um, problem set one or 2.1. Uh, the applying the concepts, if you look at page 109, again, a lot of random information that isn't going to be part of the problem, but uh, let's just do one just to get an idea of what's happening here. Um, 85 on page 109. Depreciation refers to the decline in a car's market value during the time you own the car. According to sources such as Kelly Blue Book and Edmunds.com, not all cars depreciate the same rate. All random information that doesn't really apply to the problem. Okay, now we're, get, we're getting into the numbers. Suppose you pay $25,000 for a car which has a high rate of depreciation, which means it loses its value quickly. Your car loses about $5,000 in value per year. So it loses. We take off $5,000 every year. Represent this loss in value as a negative number. We just did. $5,000 from the $25,000 means that we lost 5000 When you lose something, you subtract it. Um, a car with a low rate of depreciation loses $2,750. Represent this. So instead of losing 5000 some cars only lose 2750 So we're still losing, so we represent that with a negative number. So that's the kind of thing they're asking you for. Depreciation, a loss. You go downhill, you're going in a negative direction. You go into the ocean, you're going below sea level. So that's below zero or less than zero. If you're in an airplane and you jump out, you are losing altitude. You are subtracting altitude. So all of those words, temperature, you know, if the temperature goes down, it's going in a negative direction. Even though it's 60 degrees and you lost 10 degrees, you still went down 10 degrees, minus 10. It doesn't mean it's minus 10 outside, it just means you lost 10 degrees. So as you're doing that, just look at the words up, down, less, greater, to figure out whether you're looking at negative numbers or positive numbers there. Okay, that's lesson 2.1.